There are six main properties of circles that we need to know to do with geometry. And there's also an additional one if you're sitting the higher tier exam. If you remember this diagram on the, on the screen, then you'll be able to work with all of the circle theorems. The first circle theorem is that a tangent meets a radius or diameter at 90 degrees. Basically, a tangent is a line that only touches the circle in one place. Formed between them is always 90 degrees. Here's an example of a question that uses this idea. PQ is tangent to a circle with diameter AB. Angle QAB is 30 degrees, and we want to find angle X. We know that PQ is tangent to the circle, and we know that AB is a diameter. So that means the center to B is a radius. So we know that this angle here must be 90 degrees, because a tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees. We can now look at the triangle ABQ. We have interior angles 30 and 90. So to find X, we add up 30 and 90, which is 120 and then subtract from 180, which gives us an answer of 60 degrees. Here's a question for you to try. Please pause the video now and have a go, and when you're ready for the answer, press play. Here's the answer. So, we, we should end up with x being 65 degrees, because we have vertically opposite angles, so if this angle here is 25, then this angle is 25. Tangent meets radius at 90 degrees, so this angle here is 90. So that means the angle here must be 90, because angles on a straight line add up to 180. So the angles inside this triangle here, that I'm just going to outline in red, the angles in this triangle are 90 and 25, the ones that we know are anyway. So to find x, I do 90 plus 25, and then subtract from 180, and I get x equals 65 degrees. The next circle theorem to know about is that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Specifically, if we, formed, if we have an arc of a circle, formed by two radii, so these are both radii of the circle, the angle that you form at the centre is going to be double the angle that you would form if you, drew a tri if you drew a triangle from either side of the arc to any point on the circumference. So basically you could also do it here, and it would also hold true that this would be x, Basically, that the angle at the center is double the angle at the circumference. Here's an example. So, we have our angle at the center is 120 degrees. We've got an arc formed by two radii. What we can say straight away is that the angle at the circumference, PRQ, is going to be half the angle at the center. So, we can say that angle PRQ is equal to 60 degrees. Here's a question for you to try. Please pause the video now and have a go. And when you're ready for the answer, press play. Here is the answer. Okay, so we should end up with, so you should end up with angle AOB as 120 degrees. So just to explain it, to work out this angle up here, we add up the angles in the triangle DC, 120. Take that away from 180, we have 60 degrees. This is 60. Vertically opposite angles mean that this is also 60. So we can say the angle at the circumference is 60. Angle at the center is twice that, which is 120. So you'd have to explain it in words as well to get the full marks. Our next circle theorem is that the angle subtended, which just means made at, so I'll just say this just means made at or made by. So the angle subtended at the circumference by a semicircle is a right angle. We also say the angle in a semicircle is a right angle, 
And basically, if you have a diameter and then you join either end of the diameter to any point on the circumference, you will form 90 degrees. So that will be 90. If I did another one up here, probably a bit easier to see this one. That's also, let me just draw it a bit more neatly. That would also be 90. Here's an example question. And just one piece of terminology, the word collinear means lies on the same straight line. So so O is the center of a circle with diameter AQ. P also lies on the circumference of the circle. So straight away, we should notice that this angle must be 90 degrees because you've got a semicircle. It um, forms a right angle. Diameter subtends right angle. So we know that's 90. So we now know one of the angles in the triangle APQ is 90. To find the other angle, we can just use angles in a straight line add up to 180. So we can work out that angle by doing 180, take away 115, which is going to be 65 degrees. We can now add up 90 and 65 to work out what X is. Five. So we have 155 degrees for the angles that we know. We take that away from 180, and that leaves us with x. So we end up with x equal to 25 degrees. Here's a question for you to try. Please pause the video now and have a go. And when you're ready to go to the answer, press play. Here is the answer. You should get that angle ACD is equal to 65 degrees because angle at the center is 130. So this is 65. We also know that angle, we also know that BD is a diameter. So that means the whole angle BCD is going to be a right angle. So to find X, I need to do 180, not 180, 90 take away 65. And that will give me x. So x is 25 degrees. Our next theorem is that angles in the same segment are equal. So what this means is if you take uh, if you take four points on the circumference, so basically if we have a chord here and another chord here, so they don't need to go to the center. You form um, this, you basically create two segments of the circle. So I'll just draw here. You've got this segment up here and this one down here. And essentially the angles in the same segment are equal. So we can say this angle and this angle are equal and this angle and this angle are equal. I like to think of it as a bow tie. It looks sort of looks like a bow tie. It's a nice way to remember it. Here's an example question. So A, B, C, and D are points in the circumference of a circle. A, C, and B, D intersect at the point E. R is collinear with A, E, and C. So it just basically means it lies on the same straight line as A, E, and C. Angle D, C, R is 125 degrees, and we want to calculate values X and Y. Well, we can see that we have the bow tie shape formed by A, B, C, D, and E. So we can tell straight away that X is going to be 30 degrees um, and we can tell as well that y is going to be this angle here it's going to be identical with this angle here because it's in the same segment and to work out what that angle is the angle ACD we just need to do 180 take away 25 so 180 take away 25 it's going to be 155 no, nope, it's 125 though, sorry, so we just get 55. So that means y is equal to 55 degrees. Here's a question for you to try. Please pause the video now and have a go. And when you're ready for the answer, press play. Here is the answer. 
we should end up with x equals 60 because it's in the same segment as angle ABE. And then to find y, I worked out that this angle is 80 because of uh, vertically opposite angles. Then you can work out the angle here. And then of course, that's gonna be the same as y, which is 40 degrees. <coughs> Our next theorem is that if I have four points in the circumference of a circle and I join them into a quadrilateral, opposite angles of this quadrilateral add up to 180. We call this quadrilateral a cyclic quadrilateral and opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180. So we can say A plus B is 180, C plus D is 180. So if we look at this question here, we can tell that Y plus 88 adds up to 180. So to find y, we just subtract 88 from both sides, which will give us 92. So we have y equal to 92 degrees. And then to find z, we can use angles in a straight line. So z is going to be 180 take away 78 which is 102, so Z is 102 degrees. And then to find X, we can just do 102 take away 180, because X plus Z equals 180. So X is 78 degrees. Question for you to try. Please pause the video now and have a go. And when you're ready for the answer, press play. Here is the answer. So angle AEC is going to be 75 degrees because it's in a cyclic quadrilateral opposite to 105 degrees. I also know that angle AED is 90 because angles in a semicircle, um, the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. So I know this is 75, and we know that the whole angle here is 90. So to work out Z, I just need to do 90 take away 75, which is 15 degrees. Our next circle theorem is that tangents to a circle from a common point are equal in length. So basically, if you have any point outside the circle and you draw a tangent from that point to the circle and then you draw another tangent to the circle from that point, these two tangents are equal in length. Here's an example. Circle C is shown, O is the center. So we want to work out angle X. So firstly, I'll notice that this is 90 degrees because we know that AB and AC are tangents to the circle. So these are both 90. I also know the angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference. So this is 120, double 60. So if I look at the quadrilateral ABOC, I can tell that the angles I know are 90, 90, and 120. So if I add these up, we should get 300 degrees. And I know angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360. So to get X, I need to do 360 take away 300. So X is going to be 60 degrees. Here's a question for you to try. Please pause the video now and have a go. And when you're ready for the answer, press play. Okay, let's go to the answer. So again, we know that this angle here is 90 and this angle here is 90 because AB and AC are tangents and tangent meets radius at 90 degrees. Um, <clears throat> uh, we can also say, we can also justify that because these are equal in length, that we have an isosceles triangle. We don't particularly need that, actually. So firstly, we know these are both 90. Um, so if I look at the quadrilateral one, two, yeah, the quadrilateral A, B, A, B, O, C, so it's a kite, um, I know the two angles here are 90. I know I have an angle of 50. So if I want X, I add up the angles. I know 90 plus 90 plus 50, which is 230. Then if I want X, I need to take this away from 360, <coughs> which is 130. So X is 130 degrees. 
And then to get y, well, angle at the center is twice the angle of the circumference. So if the angle at the center is 130, the angle of the circumference is half of this, which is 65 degrees. So that's how we would do that question. Obviously, you'd have to write down the reasons to get the full marks. Finally, this is only if you're sitting in the higher tier exam. When a tangent meets a chord, so you know, here's a chord here, tangent meets it, um, we can say here as well actually, these are both chords, tangent meets the chord, an angle in one segment is made, so that's this angle here, and that's equal to the angle here in the alternate segment. So there's another picture here which is quite useful. Again, you've got a tangent meeting a chord, forms this angle here, which is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So if we look at this question here, we want to find angle X. Well, what I would say first of all is that you've got your tangent meeting a chord. So this angle here is going to be equal to the angle in the alternate segment x okay so it's not this angle and this angle because they are in the same segment of the circle it's the angles in the alternate segment so this one and this one so we know that this angle is 70 so angles in a straight line means that this angle is going to be 110 alternate angles um, alternate segment angles in the alternate segments are equal so we can say x is 110 degrees Here's a question for you to try. Please pause the video now and have a go. And when you're ready for the answer, press play. Okay, the way that the angle ABC is going to be 60 degrees because vertically opposite angles are equal. So we can see this is 60. Angle ACP is this angle here. Now, because of alternate segment theorem, this angle is also 60 degrees, right? Because you've got a tangent meeting this chord here. So whatever angle is made here is going to be identical to the angle in the alternate segment, which is 60. We can then use that angles, um, we can then use, sorry, the tangent meets a radius at 90 degrees. So we can tell that OCP is 90. So to get X, I just need to do 90, take away 60 which is 30 degrees.